First video talking, I suppose. Uh, got a lot of interest, I suppose, around at the moment with the cafe method, so I thought I'd make a new video. Um, and also just got some new glasses, so I thought I'll check it in the video. Um, I suppose the first thing that I like to do is always like to heat up my cups, but also just turn over some water in the boiler, uh, which is always good with a heat exchanger because that water sits there for a while. So when I Keep doing it until you hear the pump come on. That way you know new water's coming through. Um, always looking for a way to keep it neat and tidy, so whenever you can, I know something like a container is always good. Uh, it's always good to heat up the group if you can. Uh, get the water filter nice and toasty as well. Um, uh, that said, just um, make sure you dry it when you do something like that. Uh, ideally, you want to heat up the machine for at least 30 minutes, anything more uh, the better, but probably I wouldn't leave it on if you don't plan on using it in the next two hours, so uh, preheating is always half the battle. I um, haven't used this grinder since this morning, uh, so a few hours now, so I've programmed mine to um, get a short burst, that way I'm just getting rid of all the old grounds, because uh, coffee is generally stale after say three minutes or so, so uh, just something, yeah, program the grinder just to clear out the old stuff, that way we're only working with uh, nothing stale at this stage. A uh, little tool again, just keeping it clean, got a cut, cut in half, uh, as is really clean, but obviously when you get towards the top, uh, some of the grinds will just bounce off, so just something like this keeps it all neat and tidy. So what I'm using here is the Mini E, uh, with my timing at the moment, I've programmed it uh, to do two bursts basically, uh, one to half fill, give it a bit of a tap, settle it, and then do it one more to do it time. Uh, so just settle the grinds a bit, get the cup out the way. Um, you, know, you might have seen me use like a dosing tool in the past, that's usually uh, just the first go, just to get my dose right, once I know that's right, on the timer, I then just move it around a bit with the fingers and go from there. Now with the tamping, um, I just generally place the tamper on top, give it a bit of a wiggle, so that you've got a nice even base to work with, and then just basically put some pressure, now just feel it with your fingers, and that's kind of an indication that you're tamping straight. Give it a few twists. You don't want to be tamping crooked, that's all. Otherwise, you might channel. Clean off any coffee off the top. Uh, usually, I use the water from the cups to clean out that cup that I did before. Uh, anything that you can reuse is generally pretty good. Your cups are quick. All right. Now, with any heat exchanger, this one. It's obviously very good as far as um, heat retention in the head, but again, uh, water has been circulating in that heat exchanger, so you just want to bleed that off um, until it's forming pretty much just a kind of a one stream, just a short burst. It also heats up the head as well. Um, now with this part, you want to work quickly. Uh, don't want to leave the porter filter too long in the head, so you want to put it in hit the brew switch and then kind of put the cup straight away. So hit that, hit the brew, put the cups under, and it's a stage I'd like to uh, just bleed my steam on. Now this time I've kept the uh, milk in the fridge. Uh, this you might want to do, you might not want to do, either way it's really fine. So you want to watch that stream of coffee. And then when it starts to really start to move around, you know that the viscosity is not so much there, so a bit more water starting to come into it. So you just want to stop the shot right there. So just give that a quick bleed. 
Now I'm going to use the uh, KK method this time. A lot of people have been talking about it just recently. Um, now basically you want to put the steam one in the middle, but just above the milk. Uh, you want to give it a short burst, uh, like a short turn just to break the surface and then hit it full bore. So we're going to do a little bit, and then we're going to go full bore. And basically you just want to make sure that that's in the middle. Uh, so it's really only just a short stretch and then the rest of the period uh, you're pretty much just leaving alone full bore and that's basically uh, generating that, that whirlpool effect essentially. Um, so you're just going to keep going and keep going. I've got a temp tag uh, which will start to change colour once it reaches the right temperature. Uh, I found this to be really good, uh, really accurate too. Unlike say with a traditional um, thermometer temp pack's quite good because it doesn't have so much lag. So just clean up your steam wand. Uh, this machine has a cool touch so it's pretty easy to click clean as far as that's concerned. It's something I really liked when I bought the machine. So just purge anything in the steam wand. Keep it nice and clean. It stays good. I'm going to attempt to do some latte art. May happen, may not happen, but um, again, just with a container anywhere where you can. Uh, so just in terms of crema, uh, you can see there we're looking pretty good. Um, so with the uh, milk, so we just want to get it mixed. So just give it a bit of a swirl, and you may see it's quite shiny. Again, that's really just as you saw, it's pretty easy just uh, getting the same one just above the milk um, and then just a little, little spurt and then full bore and that's basically the rest of the time uh, you just you just basically uh, whirlpool effect the milk just to get it all combined. Uh, so pour in the latte out. I just only have two fingers at the top so keep it moving a bit of a swirl uh, so down the side and then so a little bit there but it's very hard to work around a camera uh, so in this video I'll also show you a bit of, uh, just what I do as far as cleaning uh, for anyone who's really interested obviously the more you keep clean uh, the better your coffee will taste down the track. Uh, so not really any latte art, but um, I'm sure it'll taste pretty good. Uh, so in terms of cleaning, um, again, it's just better to keep clean. Uh, you spend all this money on a coffee machine, you want to get the best result. Um, and if it's letting you down because it's not clean, well, it's really up to you to to just do this. So first of all, just clean out the old coffee. Really handy to have a container handy um, to do this. Just means that, you know, obviously there's less in the machine to clean up, less mess, less time cleaning. So essentially that's clean. So a good group head brush, just the uh, pull head brush, just getting the spent coffee up there. Out quickly over the shower screen. Uh, so I just get rid of this water now. Uh, so I now get the water filter. Just put a bit of maybe five or ten seconds, a bit of a wiggle, gets any coffee out from the water filter, uh, so that you're always working with a clean water filter. Uh, still, some will remain, but. You know, it's, it's, it's as best as we can do. Now this machine comes with a second porta filter, so I just use it with a blind basket. So just chuck it up in there. Again, the same process. Bit of a wiggle, once you're satisfied, lock it in, watch the pressure. And just put a little bit more. Now essentially we're pretty much there, so I just uh, move that container up and out. Release that. 
get rid of the water and basically turn it off, give it a quick wipe down, get rid of any excess steam. Uh, thing I find is really good is once you know you've done that the rag is really hot so it's good actually just to any little bits of milk or whatever that's kind of squirted up just give it a quick wipe um, grab your porter filter and basically uh, lock it in and you're pretty much Ready for next time. Thanks for watching.